Hi everyone and welcome back to Journey to Med. My name is Liddy and I am a second year medical student studying at Barts in London. For those of you who are new to this channel, I make videos on lifestyle content, vlogs and academia. So if you want to see more content from me, then hit that subscribe button below. For those of you who are back, thank you so much for coming back to another video. This video is going to be on how to prepare for online medical school interviews. So many universities have already announced that they will actually be conducting interviews online this year. And if you go look at the Medical School Council website, they do have more information on that. But just because it's online doesn't mean that I'm going to allow you guys to flop this interview and not work to the best of your ability. It might be online, but the tips you're about to receive in this video should put you in the right direction to excel at your interview. The first thing I'm going to address is what resources should I use to prepare for my interviews before you even start doing practice questions you have to know exactly what is expected from you at an interview one of the things that i used to provide me with more knowledge and information was msag so msag actually have a free online course going on yeah it's free during interview season i literally made notes on all of their videos which gave me so much knowledge on what is expected from me at mmi or panel interviews it also provided me with knowledge on different tips on how i could elicit myself during the interviews clearly and confidently phrases that i could use to link different things this free msag course was very vital in my preparation for interviews so i suggest you all check it out the next resource that i used tremendously for interview preparation was the knowledge guys the knowledge it it was one of the things that allowed me to gain all of my offers from all of my four interviews guys the knowledge yes it is slightly outdated even from when i did my interviews which was two years ago i think i'm not a mathematician guys i'm a medical student but i just feel like the way you put the information together in a concise way was so useful i feel like there are med many medical school books out there and they're all like this thick and that is just a lot and you might end up having that information overload on things that you don't even have to know so i feel like the knowledge was a thin book it was very useful obviously it doesn't have everything you have to know but it does set you up with a very good foundation so i'll definitely say have a look um but do bear in mind that it is a bit outdated the next thing that i would say to find resources to prepare literally go on google and type in medical school interview questions you will be surprised where research can get you you know don't wait to be spoon-fed information go out of your way and look for it for example you watching this youtube video right now is you preparing for your medical interview so i hope you're taking notes there are so many free resources out there and paid resources as well depending on how much you're willing to pay the next resource that i strongly suggest using is twitter I know it might sound ridiculous, but Twitter was so useful in updating me on what is happening in the health world. So I would follow BBC News, the NHS. I would follow sites that would give me small snippets of what was going on. And if I wanted to look deep into it, then I'd click on the link and go read an article. But it's really good at staying up to date with what is happening in the medical field, which is so important for medical school interviews because sometimes you might get a question thrown at you what have you read recently um in the news so definitely don't disregard this strongly suggest using twitter so the next thing i'm going to be addressing is how should i prepare for my medical school interview once you've done your research once you've gained a bit more knowledge on how to structure your sentences how to articulate yourself in a clear manner then you know what's coming up guys but it is practice 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 some of us are so tired of that rinse out phrase practice makes perfect but it's literally nothing but the truth practice with whoever you can i definitely suggest practicing with a friend who is doing medicine that is so useful they might not be an expert but they are learning from what you knew being interviewed and you're actually you're going to be surprised how easy it is to give each other feedback if you want to be more sure of yourself and you're sure that you're giving good feedback to your friend then maybe watch mock interviews that you find online or on youtube don't give expert advice because you're not an expert on interviews but you aren't silly you can interview a friend and see that oh friend you are speaking a bit too fast oh friend you might want to prevent erming a bit more oh friend you might want to speak a bit more formally so that what you're saying is clear to the interviewer so no one's asking you to give expert scientific advice but just simple things like 
mannerisms, body language. You can see that with your eyes and feedback to your friend or someone doing medical interviews. This doesn't have to be someone doing medicine. It can be any friend. It can even be a relative. It can be a sibling. It doesn't have to be an admissions officer. It doesn't have to be a doctor. Practice is still practice. Obviously, a lot of interviews might be online this year. So I would suggest actually doing some of that practice virtually so that you can practice things like making eye contact with the webcam. You can practice things like speaking louder so that the interviewer can hear you. You have to practice these things so that you're perfect on the day. So I will definitely suggest practicing virtually as well. And do practice things like looking at the webcam and sitting straight back posture, speaking with confidence so that they can get that through the camera. It is quite difficult because there's that lack of body language, that lack of ability to build rapport physically, but you can still build rapport with your interviewer through the webcam by smiling, speaking with confidence, getting your point across, answering the question, so many things you can do. Just because it's virtual doesn't automatically put you at a disadvantage. You can make it work in your favour. It's completely fine. One thing to make a note of when you're doing practice questions, don't just focus on the really difficult questions like why medicine or what is your opinion on this? Talk to me about ethical pillars regarding this situation. Yes, those questions might come up. It's really good to practice them. But do keep in mind as well that interviewers do know that a lot of us were so busy practicing the difficult questions, we forget to practice the simple questions as well. Don't just practice on a specific subset because you think it's a hot topic, but give yourself a variety of different questions. Don't make the mistake of memorizing complete answers for practice questions. When you memorize something, it is so clear to whoever will be interviewing you. When you've memorized something and you're trying to regurgitate it, you're like, um, oh yeah, yes, I want to do medicine because, what did I say? No, you're going to sound robotic. Doing practice is good, but if you overload practice when it comes to interviews, it does show when you speak. It shows with your speed. It shows with your tone. You want to sound human. You don't want to sound like a robot that is speaking very fast just because they memorized the questions. That's not what you want. You don't want to do. I remember I was practicing so much. I accidentally memorized some of my um, answers. So I went to like a mock interview thing. And like the people I had were like, you're speaking too fast. You sound like a robot. I was like, crap. So I fixed that up before my actual interviews, luckily. One thing I did was I actually made flashcards, right? And I bullet pointed the main things I wanted to say, the key points I wanted to bring in, the key words I wanted to use, connectives I might forget. I had like a pack of flashcards. It was there as a basis for me to fall on during interview prep, but I didn't memorize it. I always kept myself open and honest to whatever would flow into my head on the day. The next thing is, oh my God, guys, jot down your feedback. Jot it down every single time, regardless of who is interviewing you, regardless of the situation. If someone conducts a practice interview with you and it gives you feedback, take it, write it down, remember it, reflect on it, go back on it. Before you do the next practice interview, look at your feedback. Remember, oh, last week my friend said that I speak too fast. Before I do this practice interview, I'm going to remember to slow down and then you do the next one. You have to take in feedback, you have to write it down and consume this feedback because that is the only way that you will grow. You can't grow without making mistakes, which leads me on to my next point. Take it easy during practice interviews. I remember I was getting so frustrated when I was getting negative feedback about how I was conducting myself during interviews. So I might not have been speaking loud enough. I might have been speaking too fast. And just get hearing that again and again was annoying me. I was like, oh my gosh, I'll never be ready for my interviews. My life is over. But no, feedback isn't meant to stress you out. It's meant to help you. So take it in with an open heart and don't allow it to stress you out. If you do get an interview, you are in a very lucky, privileged position. So the best thing you can do for yourself is go into pre um, preparation with an optimistic mind. You are 100% be fine. Just like with everything else, when you first begin the process of interview preparation, it will it will feel like a whole new world. Like a whole new world. A whole new world. A dazzling place I never knew. The more you practice, the more you learn about different interview skills, you will become more confident. And by the time interviews roll around, it's going to be a minor thing. <laughs> to really nail down on certain habits, video yourself. Someone could be asking you questions, angle your phone or anything to record you. It could be a parent interviewing, it could be a teacher, a friend, a sister. At the end of that practice interview, 
go look at your phone and just watch yourself. You're going to be so shocked at some of the things you do when you're thinking, when you're nervous, when you've forgotten something. It's so crazy. And in terms of overcoming those habits, just do your research as well. Go online. How do other people overcome those habits? I remember one of the habits I had, I kept saying like and um every one second. I know it's normal for humans, to, um, but it was so frequent and it was destroying the quality of my answers. So to prevent that, I decided to try and eliminate like and um from my dialect when speaking to my parents, when speaking to my friends, whoever I was speaking to outside of a practice interview setting, I tried to prevent liking and umming so that when it came to practice interviews and the raw interviews, they weren't too prominent. So the next question I'm going to be addressing is how do you balance your A-levels and medical school interview preparation? This is a sticky one. This is a sticky one. But it's doable. No one is saying it's easy. It's very challenging. And it's one of the reasons why I literally got... I had aggressive stress spots during um, medical application season, interview season, because of, you know, this. I was balancing a job, A-levels and interview prep. One thing that really helped me through it and will help you is organisation. Organisation is key. You need to be slotting in interview prep like it's a lesson. Don't be like, oh, I'm just going to plan my other lessons this week and when I have free time during lunchtime on Wednesday I'm going to interview prep if you haven't written it down it's most likely not going to happen it's going to pass you by like whoop. you don't want that write it down put it in your planner and take it seriously if you said you're going to prep on Thursday prep on Thursday I think if you haven't got an interview date yet you don't need to do it that aggressively maybe two or three times a week depending on how bad your initial interview skills are how much you need to progress but when I had an interview around the corner it was more frequent I sacrificed a period of time for interviews so I knew I had a level so I'd make sure that I take a free period in the morning before less since actually start me and Hazal would go to the common room at my sixth form and we'd just practice because the common room was quiet I could concentrate there weren't people around so I wasn't shy I recognized that and I found the best optimal time for me you have to take matters into your own hands and be responsible like that so whatever time will work for you sacrifice it to some interview time it doesn't have to aggressively be every day especially if you don't know the date of your interview if your interview is in January why are you practicing every day from November you might want to to reduce this because at the end of the day you still have a levels to prepare for don't allow a levels to take a complete back seat in the name of interviews but just to let you know in advance when interviews are approaching when you get your date when they're approaching a few weeks leading up to your interviews you might slack on homework a bit slack on schoolwork a bit this is fine it does happen sometimes it's not that deep i literally had I think three interviews in December slash November. Also guys, I've made an interview series in the past. So if you haven't watched it, I've got so many videos, my interview experience, other tips on how to smash interviews. Definitely go check out the interview series. I'm gonna make a playlist called interview series and you have to go watch it ASAP. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so you might slack a bit, um, on schoolwork when interviews are, are fast approaching but just make sure that you you have saved time afterwards to catch up and make sure that you haven't fallen behind too much because you might do so well in your interviews but if you've disregarded schoolwork completely then you're not going to exactly meet the entry requirements whether you like it or not it will harm your studies slightly because you are splitting your attention a bit but don't let it get too bad i would also suggest using free time such as free periods sometime after school to do research on your universities guys please do not forget you're not just applying to medical school you're also applying to that specific university you need to tell that university why they should choose you not just to study medicine but to attend at their university because every university is out here like oh we the best so you can have four interviews but you gotta put on that two-faced mask and act like each university that you have an interview at is the best is your number one choice so do research on universities when you get your offer for a particular university for a medical school interview dedicate some time to go do some research what is that university's unique selling point what are you going to bring to that university have you done your research have you seen that they have a netball team are you going to be like when i start university i hope to join 
the netball team that i know have won three trophies in the last semester obviously don't do too much but do show that you are knowledgeable i literally had a page i split it into my four universities and had a few facts about each university that i wanted to bring in so if i was asked why do you want to come to this university i had five things backed up ready to say that was one of my you know the chicks i had up my sleeve every time i mentioned something about the university when i had the opportunity to when it was the time to don't just throw it in there for banter when it's irrelevant like the interviewers were always like "Ooh, yo she knows about our university she loves it here this is clearly her first choice you know she loves the university just as much as we do when you get that enthusiasm across that's a tick 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 babies those are my top tips on how to prepare for medical school interviews i really hope you found it useful if i missed anything then comment it down below sharing is caring subscribe down below and turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss any upcoming interview videos since we're in the middle of an interview series can't wait to share more tips with you guys i really hope you found it useful and i'll be sure to see you guys for another video next week bye <laughs>